Hi everyone, welcome to the IPFS Core Invitations Weekly Sync for Monday the 9th of November 2020. I am Aching Brain, I will be your host. We're going to play the game of high priority initiatives, other initiatives, parking lot, Q&A, questions. It's going to be amazing. We're going to have a lovely time. So let's start with the high priority initiatives. Uh, the first thing is upcoming and ship releases. Hot off the press, I see there's a JS lib P2P. Who can tell us about yeah. It's just a patch, but I wanted to mention this because we've said we were going to ship DNS at a resolution. And by we, I mean, I said that like last year um, and Vashko finally shipped it for me. Um, so yay, we have DNS at a resolution finally in, in JS. So yeah, that's all that's in there. That is boss. Um, we'll uh, there, there will also be a Go lib P2P release upcoming. Uh, that takes into account the Golib P2P core uh, changes to the stream interface. So for all of you who've been wondering why GoGet causes compile errors, because GoGet just grabs the latest version of everything with no caring at all for versioning, uh, that will no longer be a problem. Also, you'll have better stream closures. Amazing. Uh, also shipped. Um, about 20 minutes ago, uh, JS IPFS 52 uh, went out the door. So that would have taken the uh, lib P2P DNS out of resolution stuff with it, which is great. So that's in the hands of everyone right now. Uh, the uh, notable things in that is we stripped out the, like anything that isn't any IPOD codecs that aren't DAG Seaboard, DAG uh, PB or, or uh, RAW, um, because they're not very commonly used. So that's things like uh, Bitcoin and Zcash and that kind of thing. We, we bundled all those with, like it was always always bundled with the node install, like it wasn't in the browser bundle. Um, so it's not like the browser bundles got any smaller, but things like IPFS core now are smaller uh, and quicker to install. So, you know, everyone's CI will thank us. Um, so that's cool. Also some bug fixes around uh, the Docker container and, and a few other bits and bobs. Um, yeah, that's cool. That's the yes, IPFS release. Anything else? Anything else? What are we tracking for? How are we tracking for RC? Do we think we'll actually be able to get it out this week? Uh, I hope so. Everything is in its like final stages of, of review, I think. Um, the pinning services stuff is like basically there. Uh, I might want to go over have to go over it a little bit more, may tag Lytle to check a couple things, but I think we're basically done. Um, Last I checked, it was just like adding some tests. Uh, and Andrew's stuff is also good. I think maybe there's C some CI struggles, but. Resolved that, as long as far as I can tell. Then, then yeah, then it's just, you know, uh, just doing some, getting extra set of eyes to, to look at it. But um, everything looks, looks pretty good. And pinning will now be, and unpinning will now be much, much faster. Um, so, so folks with lots of pins will be very happy about that. Sweet. There's also, um, I don't know if it will be, it doesn't have to hold up the RC, um, but for for the release, uh, there's a, an up, we need an updated version of web UI that will utilize the pinning service um, rem remote API. Uh, if that's ready, by the time we're ready for release, we'll include it. If not, we'll just make it for the next RC. But the, the final release will be blocked on that. Cool. On from uh, ship releases, next up is the pinning services. I think we just covered that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Almost there. Migrations are ready to go. I just uh, just a final review and uh, should be ready to include that in the release. Then once things are merged, shore up the uh, the dependencies, uh, make sure everything. You know, double check that, but uh, we're ready to go. That's for the for the local pinning being faster. Yeah, that's right. that's good. Right. Yeah. We we also got like uh, a big uh, mega pull request with all the pinning service integration. Uh, ready uh, on the web UI side, uh, so we'll 
coordinate that. Uh, either it will land in the first RC or the next one. Uh, probably in the next one, so it will be easier to test that way. It'll be good. Either way, I'd like for the uh, to get an RC out sooner so we can get some of the folks with like a bajillion pins to use the new stuff and be like, yeah, it's way faster or, oh my God, you broke everything, please fix. And then we can do that before the release. I think if we can get that on, on, a, on one of our gateways, that would be, would be great because we should be able to see performance differences right away. Uh, the gateways don't really help because the gateways don't pin anything because oh, they oh, they're, okay. they're, they're like garbage collecting everything that comes in. But, but like the folks over at Pinata and stuff will notice okay. this like immediately. Okay, great. We can, yeah, that would, that would just something to test it at scale would, I think would be a good demonstration. Could we run that on our clusters though? Because uh, we do pin on a, the clusters. That's a great question. Um, I will ping Hector and InfraFox. I mean, I'm, I'm sure we're pinning stuff there. So, but I, I just don't yeah. know if it's like a I'm big sure. enough issue for anyone to, for it to bother anyone. Yeah, because I know our like local pin bot is, I believe it's used in the cluster, so. Cool, next up is sec air removal. Do we still need to see it? Because it's gone. Um, I think the only thing left is the status of our um, like flashing. I don't think we flashed the, the boost no. trap. That's right, yeah. No, I should do that this week. Yeah. Last week was a little distracting, but yeah. <laughs> totally reasonable. <laughs> Uh, moving on to JS and create discoverability and connectivity. Yeah, so the outer LA example that I was working on last week is now ready for the view. Uh, that PR also includes the setup to run tests for Node.js examples. It comes with the first test for the outer LA, but uh, the new ones should be easy to add in the Node.js. I will, as a follow-up, do also the setup for the browser with the, our only browser test at the moment. And then we can also easily add new ones. Uh, in the custom announce uh, slash sort addresses front, uh, I just uh, created a new PR for custom transport filter addresses in WebSockets. This was basically uh, because lip 2 WebSockets was allowing uh, TCP and DNS addresses, both with uh, uh, WebSockets or WebSockets secure to be dialed. This was uh, causing the famous browser error uh, attempted to connect to the insecure WebSocket endpoint that people had complained for a while. So basically, we want we are changing the, the default to only allow to dial DNS uh, WebSocket secure addresses in the browser and DNS WebSocket secure or simple WebSocket in Node, uh, but also supporting a custom function to override this because we need, for example, for local testing purposes or uh, other scenarios that uh, people need. Uh, for this week, uh, I plan to work on improving our ability to advertise ourselves on the network. Uh, I've seen to with Jacob earlier today, and I will work on uh, the peer routing subsystem. Basically, we want to find and connect to the closest peers that uh, we know over time in order to exchange our signed peer records and make our visibility in the network better. Um, and with this, I will also work on the production guides for the relay and the rendezvous, as we want to have good documentation on how people should set up their info before launching this on the next Lipid P release. And yeah, that's it for this. Great, it's gonna be nice to not have people's consoles full of lots of errors about connecting to WebSocket. Uh, next up is me, bi-directional streaming and streaming errors in the browser. So um, I got like a basic prototype working uh, of doing IPFS add uh, with gRPC over WebSockets. Um, put a demo, like a, an example together uh, with a test. 
um, yeah, it's it works. Uh, there's a lot of uh, performance tuning to do, and it's only the only thing it's doing right now is bidirectional uh, gRPC methods. So there's no like unary or anything like that um, because it's just going to fall back to the HTTP client for the time being for anything that is in the streaming response, um, which would be rad. So work is ongoing on that. Um, I put up a draft PR um, that has the implementation and the uh, example in it. Um, cool. Uh, so that is that for the end of the high priority initiatives. That is that for the end. Is that even image? Uh, that is the end of the high priority initiatives. Uh, moving on to the other initiatives. So improving web UI file and goes on. Um, so um, I'm blocked on the review. Alex, if you can get the IPI utils patch reviewed at some point, that would be really helpful. Um, once we land, then we can do the IPFS patch review too. Um, I think we'll need that regardless if we get the bidirectional streaming sync that you're working on because uh, not we won't have it for the go IPFS, right? Uh, the next one is also mine, uh, that is uh, TypeScript one. Um, so there's a bunch of uh, new changes in a PR that is linked in the notes. Uh, it removes some of the type magics that we had in place to try to work around the API manager swapping APIs uh, by removing API manager and uh, adding a bunch of other types. I also kind of spent some time looking into the issues that turns out uh, TypeScript has. So uh, it does omit uh, type parameters in generated uh, types, uh, which is not great because then it turns them into any's or it would complain when people are, when people have a structure of a setting set in their projects because emitted types are not technically valid TypeScript. Um, so I don't know, a uh, team at Microsoft seems to recognize that it is an issue, but uh, it's gonna be a while before it's fixed. And I was trying to see if I can fix it so we don't have to wait it too much, but it's not non-trivial. So there's another issue that turns out kind of intertwined with this. So TypeScript has a notion of interfaces and types and you can, import interfaces in TypeScript syntax, but you can only import types in JSDoc syntax, uh, but then you can't implement type, you can implement interface. Anyway, um, yeah, sorry for bubbling, but there's a bunch of things that still need to be work out, worked out. Uh, I also put another item, which was uh, last couple of weeks, people had been sim expressing interest in shared worker stuff in within the service worker. So that prompted me to do some work there. I wrote an example uh, that is a PR now to a JS IPFS uh, that tries to exercise all of those things and show how you, they can, can be wired. Uh, so there are some interesting findings there too that I hope to kind of write about and include in a blog post, uh, namely, so there are a bunch of limitations with how shared workers work, uh, sorry, service workers work. Um, and I think we might have to think more about how we can uh, work within those limitations rather than trying to fight them. Uh, but yeah, I think I'll try to capture it somewhere else and share. Cool. Yeah, I did take a look at that example. It's good, but there are some CI errors. Just needs a little bit of tidy up. Oh. Uh, Thanks. Next up is the Badger 2 support. It's blocked on the Badger people deciding if there will be a Badger 3 or not. Just skip to V5. V5 is going to be amazing. Right at this point. Uh, yeah, we're still waiting for any any uh, word back on that. So just check this morning. I haven't seen any movement yet. By the way, I guess I guess as a semi announcement thing, we we used to have a uh, a frequently skipped over uh, Unix FSV 1.5 other issue here. Um, someone has picked it up again, 
and uh so i'll have to do some some reviews and and see how that works and if we can uh can finally push it over the finish line and go so that was picked up as a bounty right yes yes i will likely be bothering some folks who are familiar with this and are like alex with how it was implemented in js so that we can make sure we have inner off between the two um but yeah yeah, I've been commenting on that thread um, just to make sure that the argument types are the same, <laughs> you know, because we had to, it was tedious, we had to change some stuff in JS because of some limitations of browser APIs. Boring. Anyway, that's cool. Uh, yeah, I stuck a note into the doc about that, so we can get updates on it every week now until it's done. Uh, next up is DNS adder resolving in JS, which we kind of talked about a little bit. Yeah, it's basically done. Uh, Margin released in uh, LipHP uh, 29.3. Uh, and also, I also changed the bootstrap browser addresses of just IPFS to leverage the new DNS adders so that uh, Infra can, in the long term, just remove the old ones. And yeah, that's it. Nice. Uh, next up is Natraversal. Yeah, so Arsh is back on libp 2 p He's working on nat traversal. Um, link to the main issue there, and there are a slew of them in go libp 2 p um, There's a lot of things that we need to do to make that work for everything. Um, but the focus initially, right now, he's working on getting metrics to figure out what the current state of dialability on the network is so that we have a baseline. Um, and then from there, he's going to start on uh, the quick hole punching story. Um, and then later on, we'll look at like TCP and WebRTC um, improvements to go down the line. But for the shorter term, it will be quick. Um, uh, I guess I, I left some comments on that doc, but is the plan to be using uh, using relays or not using relays initially? Well, we have to use relays regardless, but you're talking about like data exchange relays versus just... Yeah, versus like our own whatever thing. Yeah, I think right now the initial is to do um, data relays and figure out that, but um, we can we can have that conversation more this week to really, really button that down. Yeah. So for anybody who's not clear what that is, it's the idea that we just do hole punching strategy through relays. And if that fails, you continue to just exchange data over the relay um, versus having a relay coordinate the hole punch for you so that you don't actually run any data that's not related to the hole punch. Um, this is like a bandwidth saving thing for the relay and having hole punching relays versus like data exchange relays um, was mostly cost effective scenarios there. Um, pros and cons to both strategies. Dean has mentioned that in the issue. We will try to figure out that soon, which one we want to do. Um, but yeah, if you have opinions, scream in my direction. Radical. Uh, Unix 15.5 we talked about. Next up is GoIPFS GC improvements. Yes. I am currently working on, on that. I have a uh, proposal, which I'm uh, just finishing up today. Is it covers uh, what we want to do in, in terms of general approach and uh, some of the algorithms uh, that I'm going to be uh, uh, suggesting that we, we look into employing for this. And what I'm doing right now is trying to gather, gather some actual statistics uh, so that we can have some real numbers to look at. Um, and so we can incorporate that into the proposal. But I can. Uh, I'll probably be able to get at least a, a quick pass with uh, some of you today, but uh, it'll probably be a little bit longer before I have another day before I have an actual numbers, but I'd like to release the proposal um, at some time today. I wanted to do that Friday, but I wasn't ready yet. So I don't have any anything else other than that proposal yet, um, but uh, there's, like I said, I, I will post that. Uh, today, and if there's any any questions, um, we can we can address it as part of the proposal. Sounds bueno. 
Oh. Thank you. Nice. Okay, that is the end of the other initiatives. Um, moving on to the extra bits at the end. So, design review proposals. Does anybody have anything they'd like to propose for the design? Well, I should today. Um, I don't know if we want to. Do I, should I um, post a formal proposal uh, as part of a on a particular forum, or should we just uh, reach out to individuals and and uh, look for a pr initial design review on this? So you would make a description of the thing that you want reviewed. Uh, let people put their names down and then find a time to go through it. Okay. I I would like I don't I'm not sure if if we're gonna have much if I'm gonna have much time this week for this but I'd like to talk a little bit about um, routing hints uh, because it it sort of keeps coming up and I suspect that I suspect that this is going to sort of keep popping up. Um, Routing hints is the idea that if you build multiple routing systems for finding content, that it would be nice to have a heads up as to which system to look for. Um, doesn't have to be the only one. You can check all the other ones, but it's a hint as to where it might be. So you can choose to optimize for checking there first or checking there later uh, as a fallback, sort of how that works. Is information that we sort of know out of band for some data um, that we might want to have some some way of, of conveying it. Um, yeah, so I, I don't think this is going to be that would be this week, but perhaps if, if people are interested in brainstorming, then we can do some GitHub stuff this week and design review next week. Yeah, just al along those lines, because I know like we're in November and December is around the corner. And one thing I want to be cautious of is we have a lot of things in progress going on in parallel here. Um, and I know we're getting a lot of people back from Filecoin efforts and wanting to ramp up on things, but we should also take the time to um, slow things down on some of those. Like, let's ship go IPFS 0.8 and whatever things that we have in the pipeline, um, and then spend a little bit more time um, talking through some of these efforts and prep for, for next year. Um, so that when we get even more people back, we can have these smaller concerted efforts to, to push that stuff. So I would prefer to favor everyone favor design discussions um, over trying to push too many things in parallel. Uh, Adin, uh, about the routing hints, uh, I think it's also, I just want to point out that uh, textile strats do, do something along those lines. Uh, so it might be worth also looking at and talking to them about it and the, their specific use cases. Yeah, yeah, I remember the sort of how, how Threads, um, how Threads does this. This is, yeah, that's like sort of one of the options. Part of it is like how we, how we embed how we make this accessible to users, right? So Threads does this by they introduce like a thread structure or protocol. So we have slash IPFS, they have slash thread, and that embeds the information inside of it. Maybe that's what we want. Maybe it's something else. Um, and this also probably relates to Steven's like multi-path proposal, which went up uh, a week or so ago. Um, there are, yeah, I think it's I think it's related to how we interact with that as well. Basically generalizing paths instead of multi-adders so that we can say multi-adder points at a machine, but a multi-path can point at a system like threads. Yeah, I, I just wanted to make sure that whatever we end up with will enable will actually generalize over what Textile is also doing rather than not be able to capture that. Cool, we are at time, so if anyone needs to drop off, uh, drop off. Otherwise, we'll just go through the final items. Um, so, blockers and asks is the next one. Anyone blocked? Anyone got an ask? Anyone got any questions?
Anything for the parking lot? Oh, no way. No parking lot? Anything in the parking lot? Amazing. I think we're all done. Thanks everyone for coming. Uh, this has been the update for the 9th of November 2020. Uh, if you could please fill in your async reviews, that would be amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, see you all on the internet. Bye. Bye.